For our dry ingredients, we will mix together and sift 95 grams of almond flour, 90 grams of powdered sugar, and 5 grams of cocoa powder. Discard any large pieces that will not go through the sifter. For our meringue ingredients, we will mix together 90 grams of granulated sugar and optional add 3 grams of dried egg white powder. This seems to make my shells nice and full and I really like the result that I get from that. Then we will add the sugar to 90 grams of egg whites in the next step and that comes from approximately 3 large eggs. Now over simmering water, combine the egg whites and the sugar. Whisk until the sugar is completely dissolved. You can check this by lifting up the whisk and filling for granules. When you don't fill any more, you can transfer to the mixer. Turn the mixer up slowly, starting with a low setting like 2 or 3. After a couple minutes, turn the mixer up to a 4 or a 5. Then we will slowly increase the speed to a 6 or a 7. Now that we're approaching the medium peak stage, I'm going to add our red food coloring. Add a couple of drops to achieve the color that you wish. Then we're going to beat until we achieve stiff peaks. Again, I'm going to increase the speed slowly until we eventually reach the six or seven speed. Remember we're beating until stiff peaks. Stiff peaks are when you get the straight points and the point is not bending over. This is the point we want to stop mixing the meringue. Now I'm just trying to get some of the meringue off of the whisk and back into the bowl. Today I'm going to try the macronage stage in the mixer again. I tried this one time before with the Italian method. If you want to see that, I'll link that video in the cards above. I'm going to add half of the dry ingredients first, then turn the mixer on low to incorporate. After this, I'm going to add the remaining dry ingredients. Before turning the mixer back on, I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl with a spatula. Again, I'm only going to turn the mixer up to a slow speed. And then I'm going to lift up the bowl and pick it up so that the whisk is rubbing along the bottom. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting all the dry ingredients that are along the bottom of the bowl.
keep a very close eye on this because it does not take long to do the macronage stage with the mixer. Here you can see it ribboning off the whisk. Let's get a closer look. We are very close to the ribbon stage that I want to be at. I'm going to mix just a few seconds longer. Now watch how the batter is ribboning off the whisk. What you're really looking for here is how it falls back into itself in the bowl and it loses um, the texture and dimension. This is where we wanna be. Now transfer the batter to a piping bag. Now pipe your shells. You can use a template if you like. I'm using a one and a half inch circle template. If you would like this template, I'll put a link in the description below. Remove your template and tap your tray on a towel covered surface. We're trying to remove the air bubbles. You can use a toothpick or a scribe to pop any of the remaining air bubbles. Now let your shells rest for 15 minutes to one hour. Then bake your shells at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius for 14 to 15 minutes. You may need to make adjustments depending on your oven and environment, but this is a good place to start if you've never made macarons before. For the chocolate ganache filling, measure eight ounces of heavy whipping cream and 225 grams of semi-sweet chocolate morsels. Now pour the heavy whipping cream over top of the chocolate. We're going to put this in the microwave for 40 seconds. Now stir the chocolate and the cream together. The chocolate is still melting, so you wanna keep stirring until the chocolate has completely melted and then stir until the chocolate and the cream are completely incorporated. This will take a couple of minutes. Once combined, cover with saran wrap and put in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. While our ganache is setting up, let's start decorating our shells. We're gonna start with the black Santa's belt. Today I'm using a food coloring marker in the color black, this is from Wilton. I'm using a piece of paper as a straight edge and I'm just gonna mark two straight lines. Then I'm going to color in between those lines to form Santa's belt. You keep repeating the process until you have put a belt on all of your top shelves. To give dimension and texture to the buttons and the belt buckle, we're going to melt additional semi-sweet chocolate. Put in the microwave for 20 second intervals. After each interval, make sure to stir the chocolate together because it still melts as you are stirring. This is after the first 20 second interval. Back to the microwave for 20 more seconds. 
now it's all smooth and silky. Let's transfer to a piping bag. This is a 16 inch piping bag and a number three Wilton tip. You can use a smaller tip or even a Ziploc bag if you like. Transfer the chocolate to the piping bag. As you can see, I probably did not need a 16 inch bag. A 12 inch bag or even a Ziploc bag would suffice. Now take the chocolate and add two small dots to form the buttons. To create the buckle, pipe a small square over top of the black belt that we drew earlier. And then over one side of the square, pipe a straight line over top of the side and this will create the little latch part of the buckle. Keep repeating until you have finished all the top shelves. Then you want to put in the refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes to let the chocolate cool. Now that the chocolate has cooled, we're going to form our gold paint. Add a couple of drops of vanilla extract and gold luster dust. Use a brush to mix together and combine. First of all, I apologize for the flickering light, but you want to use the paintbrush and paint the gold luster dust over top of the chocolate. Paint the buttons and the buckle. And for the buckle, if you will do the outline of the square first and then come back and do the latch part of the buckle, it really gives it that authentic brass look. After painting the first coat on all my shells, I went back and painted a second coat to give it a more vibrant gold look. Again, I apologize for the dim light. It had become dark by the time I got to this point but you can see the finished product. Here in brighter light, you can see just how cute these turned out. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, check out these other Macron videos. Have a wonderful and blessed day.